Today we will look at the Query Catalog and the Query Editor. So in this system we have the Northwind database active, um, which is an in-memory H2 database with the usual tables about categories, customers, employees, and so on. So this is the well-known uh, sample database um, used by Microsoft usually. And we'll use this to assemble some queries uh, on the system and show you how to parameterize those queries and how to embed those queries, save, save them to the query catalog, and then use this query catalog to uh, embed the queries in uh, dashboards. So first thing you do is you switch to the query catalog using this, um, this, this query catalog icon up here. And um, we don't have any uh, queries available uh, right now, so there's no queries in the system. Um, but we do have the ability to create a new query. And um, we have this editor button down here. So let's click on this one right away. So this opens up a pop-up window. And we'll go to this um, edit symbol here. And this brings up another, um, another pop-up from which we can select the database. So if you have multiple databases, um, select the one you want to run the queries on. And now you can select the starting query. So let's um, maybe start with customers. Okay, so this, um, or the starting table. So this brings up um, um, this, initial, this initial query. So we can scroll down here. So this is a SQL query because it's a SQL database, obviously. Um, if, it wasn't, if it weren't a SQL database, for other databases we support, we would, uh, the, the default query language of that database would show up down here. Um, you can make edits down here, um, but we recommend to assemble the queries first using the editor. There's a couple of features um, in the query language that aren't supported via the editor, and we suggest making those edits in the text field down here at the end. So up here, um, we see a default, um, a default visualization. You have two fields uh, projected, and up here you have the, the table. So this, first of all, is the customer table. So we can click on this fields drop down and we can uh, project, add another projection and have the customer address uh, projected as well. Um, on the columns, we can have, we can perform a couple of operations. So first of all, we can um, add a filter, um, add um, a sorting. So we can sort by address, we can sort by company name. Um, note that uh, the editor doesn't support sorting by multiple um, columns. We can change the order of the columns, so we can drag and drop this guy over here, for instance, and uh, make sure that the, that the projection is in the order that we would like. Um, that's very important when you, uh, because the, the order is obviously displayed if you later use a table widget to display the results. It's also important when we have an aggregation query later on, and we have some sort of bar chart um, that we that we use to visualize the data. Um, it's also very important because the first one is always the, um, sort of the label of the of the bars, for instance, and the second one is the, the height of the bar or that actual value that's being displayed. So this ordering is very important. Um, we can now, since the system knows the primary key to foreign key relationships we can add uh, a projection from another table. So we have this customer, um, um, this customer demographics um, uh, relationship and we have the orders. So let's maybe select one column from the order. So we can say, well, maybe what, um, what, maybe what country the, the order actually went to, okay? Um, so you can see that this column is added, but you can also see that a join actually uh, took place. So we can have a look at the query. So right now we select a bunch of fields from customers and we have an inner join on the, uh, on the orders table. And from here, we can actually go on and we can look at the order details. And we can, uh, for example, have a look at the, um, at the quantity that was ordered, okay? Um, and now we can actually even join in the, the product. So we have the product name as well. So you can see that this is already a fairly complicated uh, query, joining four tables. And um, we can assemble them just by pointing and clicking um, because we have the relationship meta information stored in the database. Okay, now we can use the undo, undo function to go back a couple of steps, maybe to a, to a simpler query. 
Um, we can actually go back pretty much to the beginning. And um, I wanted to show you some other features. So we saw the uh, column reordering, we saw the sorting. Uh, we can now apply a filter. Um, so for instance, we can say, well, show me all the things that are uh, larger than around the horn. Um, and you can see that the where clause um, is added here, okay? We can also, um, so by, by clicking this little X, we can uh, get rid of the filter again. And um, we can also say things like, well, where it's equals or where it's between one and the other. So maybe bon appetit and um, maybe around the horn and something like this, right? Um, okay, so that's adding the filters. Next, let's look at aggregations. So we can, for instance, um, add the country and maybe let's remove this ID. And now from this drop down menu, we can um, not apply a filter, but, but actually group by this, um, by this country, okay? So now we get the query, select count star. Uh, so we count the customer names and from countries, but we group by the country and we also um, project this, um, this grouping. And this shows us um, the number of customers per country, okay? So maybe let's add this to a small dashboard. And since I already mentioned that the ordering is important, so let's actually drag this to the beginning. So that's important. That's sort of the contract between the query and, um, and the chart widget is that the first column must be the label and the second one is the actual value we would like to display. So let's uh, save this for now. And so let's give it a good name. So this would be um, customers per country. That's a read query. Uh, we can specify the roles um, that are allowed to, um, to, to, to run this. So admin is allowed any no, actually, we have to select the admin and authenticate it. And, um, um, or you can leave it blank. Um, that means that everybody can, can run the query. And let's create this query. Okay, so now it's um, available in the query catalog. And we can now go to the dashboard pages. And we can create a test dashboard. Go on to the dashboard. Uh, test dashboard, we can um, go into the edit mode and now edit this widget and let's make it the, um, let's make it a chart widget. The query is our customer per country. The chart type, let's, uh, let's use a uh, donut. The database is the Northwind database and the title can be customers per country. Okay, and now let's switch to the grid layout to make sure that the um, um, that we that we have a little bit of spacing. Otherwise, we can also specify the width and the height to make sure that um, the chart is actually displayed and the users can see this um, um, this um, this donut chart here. And so we can uh, maybe add another um, chart here, move it to the side, and um, we can also use it as a table. Okay, so same thing here. Um, let's just leave away the title here and we get the same displayed as um, a table. Okay, so let's save this guy here and go back to the query catalog. Okay. Okay, we can make a change to the query and maybe apply a filter um, and say all the countries that are smaller than Canada, for instance, so we only have five countries left. Um, we save, we, we save this, we update the query, and now we can go back to the dashboard. Actually, it shows up here as well, the test dashboard, and you can see that only the five um, countries are displayed now. So you can see the, uh, the interaction between the query catalog and the, and the dashboards uh, very nicely. Okay, so let's go back to the query and maybe let's, let's create a new query. So we'll do a query 
again on Northwind database, um, but this time on the employees table. And um, so what we'd like to do is we would like to introduce a, um, a parameterized query. So on the page of, a, um, of an employee, we would like to display an org chart, which um, includes all of the people reporting to this employee. Okay? So we have the employee ID, we have the last name, um, and that's also, we need to project the reports to column. So this is the recursive relationship. Um, um, that we have in the database, and in here, let's have let's include the filters so all the people that um, report to employee five, for instance. So we would like to use this query for the tree widget, and the tree widget uh, requires us to have a single projection with the um, so given given the current node ID in this case would be employee five, um, the people reporting to that employee, so we only need the uh, employee ID. So let's uh, remove this column and remove this one as well. And so we're done for now. Um, but now, of course, we would like this to be dynamic, okay? So that's where the parameters come into play. So we add some arguments. And the argument key, let's call it node. The type is an integer, and the sample is five. And down here, we can now replace this and include this variable notation and call it uh, dollar and curly brackets node. So if I go into the editor, you can see that it's replaced on the fly and I can still use the query editor to, um, to, to modify the query, but we actually have a sort of a dynamic element in here. Um, so let's call this one org charts. And it's a read query, and okay, so we're good. So let's create this query. And now let's embed this query onto the um, employees page. Okay, so let's pick a manager. So Mr. Fuller is a manager, for instance. So we go into the layout edit mode, and now we specify, um, we specify the tree widget. The query we use is the org chart, the database is Northwind, and we call this the org chart. Um, okay, so okay, we can actually save the page now, and um, we can see that the org chart is working, and we can now expand uh, employee number five and um, click on. Well, actually, we click on five. So here, the org chart uh, displays differently and only shows um, uh, these employees here. Um, we'd like to refer you to another video where, you, where we explain how you can, um, instead of have uh, just the numbers show up, uh, actually have the nice names show up in the hyperlinks. But that's um, that's in, in one of the other videos. Um, one more thing um, we can do is uh, because actually there's a convention in the um, tree widget that the variable uh, node is filled with the current ID. If you use a different widget, uh, you have to specify this explicitly. So let's um, add another widget here. So we add a widget and let's make this a table widget. Again, we use the org chart on the Northwind database. So it's the list of reports. And when we specify it like this, um, we don't get any, any results because we haven't specified which, um, which value to use to fill in the node um, argument of the query. So we can use the following JSONata expression here. So we can use value um, dot employee ID to get to the current um, ID. And this is now fed into, uh, no, not name, but node. So we create an object which is fed into the query. And this, of course, the node, the name of the field node must match the query argument. Okay, so let's uh, edit this here, and uh, you can see that now the um, the query works. So the the org chart has a built-in um, uh, a built-in contract that that um, the, the node argument is is used in the query, or it basically requires the the query to have a node argument. 
Um, the table widget is more uh, freeform and you can use any kind of um, um, any kind of value from the current um, from the current context in order to um, feed these values or or other types of JSON ASA computations and make the queries dynamic depending on the current context. Okay, maybe finally in the query catalog, um, let's go to this one again um, and go into the editor, or maybe let's just. Um, use the orders, okay, so the orders table. Um, there's also things um, that allow us to specify a distinct values. So we can, um, for instance, on the orders, project some sort of uh, freight value and we can remove these columns maybe. And if we, uh, we can make sure that we only get distinct values. Um, so this is uh, select distinct. And so on, and of course, we can also specify limits. Uh, it's quite important if you want to not overload the UI and can say, well, maybe let's limit this to um, five elements only uh, to reduce the results. You can download um, the current um, the current table to a CSV, of course, and um, open up a little editor which shows you all the commands and controls you can do. So this concludes the video. Thank you very much for your attention, and download the platform today.